Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today it's a very different topic that we talk about and the question we ask is, is it better to give gonadotrophins in the morning or is it better to give it in the evening? And this is a question which I don't think anyone has answered. So let's look at what evidence comes up about when you give this treatment. So th this was a paper which was published uh, quite recently and what it looked at, it looked at an AM and a PM dose of gonadotrophins. So let's go look at the basics. So what happens generally in the United States is gonadotrophins get sometimes split up. So they have a morning dose and an evening dose. And that's how they get usually split up. Now, they had also done a study where they showed that splitting a dose does not really change the outcome. And that's a different study which that group had done. Now, we also know that if you, and if you see one of the earlier talks, that if you give a single dose of 300 of FSH, then after that single dose here, E2 levels are sustained for approximately 24 hours. This is the first study which was done, which was done on the morning and the evening dose. And they looked at were there any advantages and were there any disadvantages. So 127 patients, a large majority of the long protocol of uh, which were 100 and in the uh, antagonist protocol were 27. They were randomized into AM and PM dose. The parameters were similar. A urinary FSH and HMG was used minimal dose of 150 and maximum dose of 450 and adjustments were done as were required. Trigger was you had a minimum of three follicles and HCG of 5000 to 10,000 was given. In the luteal phase vaginal estrogen and IM progesterone was given. And you remember that in the United States there is in many clinics a tendency to give estrogen in the luteal phase and why do they do it now? Even though evidence has not shown a huge difference and in fact show no difference what happens after ovulation after ovulation the estrogen drops suddenly and there's a drop of estrogen so the older belief was that if we gave estrogen just after ovulation the pregnancy rates may be better but that has never been proved so and they gave progesterone so let's have a look at the results the dose of gonadotrophins was very much the same the stimulation days were the same the peak estrogen levels were very much the same the number of mature oocytes was similar. Have a look at the biochemical pregnancy rate and the clinical pregnancy rates were slightly higher in the morning dose group. But the live birth rates were very similar and did not take statistical significance in, in any group. So what does this study come in? And remember this is the first study of its kind and it's, it told us that probably if you give a morning dose you may see an improvement in clinical pregnancy rate but eventually live birth rates didn't make a difference so if at present I'll say well we don't know we also know that if you have a look at their E2 levels the E2 levels were slightly higher in the AM group and, and there is a reason uh, if you ha have a look at the E2 levels and the E2 levels must be peaking in the morning uh, and that is something which may be happening. So uh, it's again difficult to know whether on the estrogen levels it made any huge difference. Now the circadian uh, you know, cycle that goes on uh, in gonadotrophin stimulation was not noticed in LH and FSH so it doesn't vary by what time of the day and what time of the night unlike TSH that tends to vary. And again, if you look at the twinning rate, twinning rate was, slight, uh, was slightly higher in the PM dose. This study may have multiple criticisms. But what it tells us, it tells us that it doesn't matter when you give the dose. It doesn't matter if you give an AM dose or a PM dose. And statistically, your chances of pregnancy may be very much the same. Even though in this study the tendency towards a clinical pregnancy and a, and a pregnancy rate went higher with an AM dose I don't think it makes any difference for when you give this.
So why did I present this paper? And I generally presented this paper because it's one of the it's a common question asked, and the common question which is asked is what, when do we give these injections? And again, the similar question get asked is when do we give the antagonist? Do we give it in the morning and then do we give a twelve hour, uh, you know, uh, gap between the the uh, antagonist and the analog trigger? And there are so many misconceptions that occur. And I think in the next lectures I will talk about how the analog trigger works and how the and uh, antagon cycle influences the LH and how there is it doesn't make a, a difference but that's for a different lecture that's a far more extensive lecture so I hope you've liked like this talk again share it and uh, spread it so that we, we just uh, you know disseminate whatever new we will learn and if you do come for the course in four weeks time you're welcome <laughs>